Welcome back to Star Wars Minute. It's the daily podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and celebrate the Star Wars movies one minute at a time. I'm Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. I'm Alex Robinson from AlexRobinson.fun. I am Tom Taylor from ABCDTOS. And I'm John Engel from the Alien Minute podcast, which I decided I went with a different one. Tom, mm-hmm. I expected you to go with a different show. You, you have five or ten I podcasts. thought about it and we didn't discuss it beforehand, so I stuck with the tried and true. I ah, forget it. Mm. I, sh- I should have Next said Let's start over again. Right. Can we come back tomorrow so we can, can I? Okay. It's a period of civil war. <laughs> Thank you. Um... Yeah, once again, thanks guys for coming back. And once again, uh, um, Joe Maisel is uh, not, uh, he's lost somewhere over the Sargasso Sea. I think that's the, that was the last one we heard. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll have to get an update and we'll talk to, to get the, the radar feedback. <laughs> radar department will give us some coordinates or something. I don't know what, that's how uh, people talking mm-hmm. like the Navy yeah. or something, right? Sure. Well, on today, we're not talking about the Navy. We're talking about minute 102 Space of uh, Star Wars. Episode 9, uh, The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, it starts with Ray walking into her pop-pop's house, <laughs> and it ends with uh, Finn whispering, Wait. Yeah, wait. wait. Mm-hmm. He's Pete, requesting White Lion Pop-Pop songs. It just proves <laughs> you are indeed a Jedi. <laughs> proves that you're way too into this movie. <laughs> my my first uh, note is, I love the shot uh, we were talking about yesterday, Space Battles, a lot. And I love the shot where you see the Star Destroyer and the engine is lit and you see the you see the fighters going in front of it. Like they look like bugs mm. in, in front of a, you know, like moths mm-hmm. around a, uh, it just looks really cool. Uh, like yeah. Moths around a, 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 a I light I have the same bulb. note, not really about the bugs, but I did point out that shot in particular yeah. as a way of saying, I think that J.J. Abrams isn't so bad. I know that someone in this room right now, he's trying Hmm. to keep a straight face and he's (laughs) failing right now, does not like J.J. Abrams. And I get it. I don't think he's the greatest by any means. But he has a knack for certain things. And obviously, this has been discussed ad nauseum through The Force Awakens and so on, that he's great with actors. He's great with casting. I think he's got a great sense of like a, a... visceral filmmaking like his scenes usually move especially action usually moves well and cuts well and i think he's just got a good eye you know i I don't know i like there's so many beautiful shots in this movie i could watch this movie as much as i love john williams of course i wouldn't really turn the sound off but you could watch turn the sound off and i think it would be a very pleasant experience just watching the images go by being a Star Wars fan, you could turn the picture off. Yeah. It'd be nice too. Oh, oh hey, hey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. Um, I kid. Yeah, I, I, I wish th- you know we've got some of the the um, some of the less legitimate uh, Star Wars Blu-rays that we've come across have um, less legitimate in terms of provenance, not in terms of content. More legitimate in terms of content, but um, they have you know a, a, a score only mm-hmm. option basically which is which is one I wish they should have that officially for every mm. movie they should have that the same way they have you know like sound of music sing along or whatever on, on <laughs> they should totally have like a here just watch this with the music don't worry about what what everybody's saying um for all the star wars yeah, for all movies sure <laughs> except for star trek 3 cuz that would be like it would just be like mostly silent <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about like why are you watching star trek 2 I uh, I don't know um, if you guys noticed it. You can hear uh, the Star Wars theme in this being when he goes starts hmm. flying in. You can just hear the Star Wars theme. It's a uh, cool little hmm. Easter egg. Well, well, <clears throat> nice. well, we're talking about music, I and this is a question for our friend Chrysanthi Tan. She could probably answer this, or they could probably answer this better than me, um, or any of us here. But I was watching this movie the night, and like I said, I love John Williams. Maybe one of my favorite people on earth. But. Does this movie have any like punchy moments of score, like original stuff that really stands out, or is it mainly just kind of a replay? It's like a a reprise of the uh, rest of the films of the sequel trilogy. Um, I don't know. I we were just on the subject of music, so I decided to ask this question. I didn't really even have that prepared, but I was thinking about that the other night when I was watching it. I don't know. Maybe I'm throwing that out there to the listener. Uh, more than I am to you guys because mm-hmm. I'm looking at your faces and I'm, <laughs> I'm like not seeing answers forthcoming. Well, you know the answer. Yeah, that's maybe that's the, the answer. answer. You I, your own question in the form of a question. But <laughs> I feel like someone who's that's the really attuned <laughs> to the music on a professional level might be able to say no. 
there's all these little moments. Listen again. Or somebody who like bought the soundtrack is like, oh, there's Jenna's theme or whatever. Right. You know, I don't, is well, there? it's just okay. like in the, in the Last Jedi. You know, when she's following Luke around, Luke goes fishing and he's drinking the blue milk and all that stuff. The the siren milk. Mm-hmm. It's just so unbelievably amazing. Like to me, the music in that is like some of the best stuff ever. Yeah. Like some of Williams' best stuff ever, period. Not just Star Wars. And yeah. I listened to that soundtrack and, uh, over Force and over Awakens. again. Yeah. And um, yeah, Ray's theme, like when we first meet Ray and she's exploring mm-hmm. the Star Destroyer and sliding down the big hill, Sandy Hill, Dune. Yeah. Like all that stuff is really memorable on the same level as any other Star Wars movie to me. And this one, I'm just not sure if he was like, I don't know, was there no inspiration? Was it too hurried? Like, I don't know, but um, I would love for someone mm. to, to come through and say, hey, what about this part? And there'd be one that I just didn't pick up on while watching. Mm. I don't know. Right. Well, I think he was too busy bartending to write the music, <laughs> right. right? That was his... A little too maybe drunk. Maybe yeah. yeah. Um, so... Um, yes, I, I can't think... I mean, we're not the... I'm not, and I'm, I'll, I will extend this to Alex, and we've no, we've said many a time before that we're not the best noticers of music as it goes on. So yes. we're probably not the best. Uh, um, yeah. We're not going to have an answer for you. Yeah. It was, it was pure, yeah. the, like recognizing the star Wars theme is about as deep as I can get with my <laughs> yeah. analysis. There's the star Wars right. theme and everything else. Or everything the that's Theater not the theme theme Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, There's a lot of that. Leonardo DiCaprio meme, but you had the headphones <laughs> on and you're yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Um, and this spooky cave um, and the big spooky Exegol cave, which yeah. I do like. That looks cool. It's it's an effective, weird, huge, like, Minds of Moria kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. Do we... We're all Star Trek nerds here, too. Do we... Am I the only one who gets a kind of, like, V'ger mm-hmm. sense from this oh, thing? Yeah. From, the, like, the, the flickering yeah. and the weird sounds coming from nowhere. And you, it's huge, but you can't, like, yeah. see the whole thing. But you see little weird details here and there. It's uh, very V'ger yeah. to yeah, me. Absolutely. Mm. That would be neat if it very was like V'ger. instead very of that's what the V's for. Very very I mean, V'ger. <laughs> this is a very V'ger Christmas. This is reaching a little bit more. <laughs> it's but sucks. later when we get them, you know, the ground attack on top of the Star Destroyer, like being on top of ships and things like that too, make me like people actually walking yeah. on top of oh, a yeah. ship. That reminds me of V'ger yeah. too. Yeah. You know, like all that. Sure. So much of what happens at yeah. the end of the Star Trek <clears> motion <throat> picture is like very distinct to me like it's like maybe because i saw mm-hmm. it when i was four or five whatever but um it's like yeah that's yeah, just yeah, like star yeah. trek the motion picture too it's like well i'm sure there's, <laughs> i'm sure there's other things where people have walked on top of spaceships but um um not like i just that. always think back Probably. to, to V'ger and and all that would you guys have liked it more or less if this movie ended like ray gets here goes into the cave to yes. confront the emperor and it is it's like V'ger. it's like like a a computer or something that has got like that's uh, why there's this broadcast of like oh the emperor's in control of this and Landru. like the computer's actually controlling no, totally. everything yeah almost like a landrew <laughs> kind of a thing and uh and that's that's where like the glitch there's like a computer with a glitch and she you know basically just walks in and to confront her her heritage and turns that out oh, that's all well, wrong the first it's just thing you'd have to do is have her conf- be so angry. And confront palpatine and they have it out and then she chops his head off and then it's got wires sticking out of it and that yeah. first reveal right. and then it was like then the laughing starts again and it's palpatine's soul caught what was that what was the novel that where people got their souls caught it was a star wars novel one of the worst ones from the oh 90s boy. where this know. alien invasion <laughs> happens and they're able to put people's souls in these ships and that fuels the ship <laughs> like i can't remember what oh boy. somebody will remember that uh-huh. if i didn't have mm. a fever dream and create that myself which <laughs> trademark <laughs> um but uh if uh. Did you read that if one? While somehow you Palpatine carpet? returned is that his soul was trapped inside of a machine like V'ger or something. I don't know. Uh, wow. His Contra, mm. as, as previously discussed. I, well, what if she slices his head off? It, it's revealed to be robot parts. And like, the, like the lights go out and all of a sudden you hear clapping <laughs> and it's Leia comes out and it's like, you passed your Jedi test. Hooray. And, and, like, and, and the Solo's thing. there yeah. and Chewbacca and Lando. And ben, ben Solo comes in the whole <laughs> Kylo Ren thing. Yeah, was just Anakin Skywalker. All yeah, part of Leia's evil. plan. Yeah, Hux, Hux is there. <laughs> Turns out that was what yeah. was going on. Her parents, her real parents, the are there. They're like we're so proud <laughs> of you. Palpatine is like, there, but he's like a good guy. Now. He's back to Senator Palpatine, and he hasn't. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, going all the way back to. Yeah. The, to he takes her away in his hot air balloon. It's all been Leia's plan, <laughs> I watched even this though simulation. she was alive. <laughs> Great interest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like it. And of course, Kirk. Of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I'm a little uh, teapot. Go ahead, Pete. What's up? I was going to say that I'm the, the this then this we get to see a lot of Imperials being all like, oh, they're attacking us with their ships, and you know, <laughs> no, no. Like, they literally have over a thousand star destroyers. Yeah. Are they really worried? I mean, I granted, of course, this is Tarkin's whole thing. Like, you know, what? This is the, there's no way this this a ship this uh, attack can possibly work. But I guess that's why they're so nervous because they've seen yeah. these incredibly long odds. Our defeats, hubris, uh, our hubris meter is off the charts, sir. What are we doing? Don't yeah. pull a Tarkin. <laughs> Remember what we learned in the academy. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah why not? You could self destruct like four of these guys. Completely knock out that entire attack yeah. ship. Still have a few hundred. <laughs> yeah, that would be like the other Holdo maneuver. But I mean, there's literally one thousand eighty on star destroyers in the fleet. One thousand eighty star destroyers, and you only need one because wow. they could all blow up a planet. And once you can blow up a planet, you don't really need to do it over and over again. It seems like yeah. overkill. Well, that was my other question. Was earlier we saw one of the these star destroyers go to the, and blow up the planet that. Um, the uh, Felicity planet, mm -hmm. Kimchi, mm -hmm. Kimchi, and uh, did that star destroyer? Do you think then just come back and get back information, <laughs> yeah. or is this still out oh, there? Yeah. You just so found a story. See, why not just you oh, found a story? To, why waste the fuel? Just <laughs> blow it up, just send it adrift. Like you got so many, you don't really need. They could all be somewhat like a kamikaze mission or something. Like just send them on out. We don't right. need them back. Once you've destroyed a planet, I think that's enough. Well, yeah, that's you know, mean. we got plenty more. Well, I think you should just keep going planet to planet and just keep going until oh, wow. they stop you. That you is know? weird because at the end of the movie, are there star destroyers and then there's star destroyers? Like, are these new different star destroyers that are already already out there, like in the yeah. in the galaxy? Because yeah. these we've seen them yes, before are, this scene. You know, obviously they're like they're like a modified them. version of okay. what we've seen. Right. So there's these sure. guys, and like at the, I'm thinking of the end of the movie where you see like I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but the good guys. I win think Alex was thinking of the end of the movie too. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, yeah. He's been thinking of the end of the movie <laughs> for six months. He has dreams about it. <laughs> about yeah. it yeah. Mom? <laughs> um, I want to see yeah. what happens. <laughs> Wait, well, so what was your question about the Star Destroyer? I think it was just, I was, oh, I was forgetting movie? that these aren't all the Star Destroyers in the galaxy, that there are others in the world and that they're, because you see them later on, they're like just getting destroyed and defeated and stuff on, yeah. on, around different parts of the galaxy, so... Um, I mean, I'm assuming the first order has still has a fleet. Well, yeah, somewhere. somehow these all, these people all got here. They had to bring something to get like Admiral Grant mm. and, uh, whatever his name is, Richard E. Grant. Well, don't they all live on, they don't Admiral live on Grant. Exegol? Not Richard know, E. Grant. We be, saw him in other scenes and off, yeah. you know, wherever he they just were. Flew in. Oh, right. okay. He just flew in. That's true. He just flew in from Kajimia. Boy, his I mean, all, anyone who's wearing a first order <laughs> uniform was not there, right? Originally. That, that, that was, you know, that's right, all Sith. they were all back in the, in the so yeah, right. somebody had to bring so there's some star destroyers like hanging out there somewhere that they brought there or how else would they get there and enough that they can man now all these thousands of new ships yeah he's, like, oh. there, are there two thousand regular ships and now a thousand and eighty new cooler ones you know what we should just dig the deepest hole of trying to figure this out because there's no good explanation for this one. Get out your calculators. Let's, let's pause and count. This is also. just so absurd. Everything about this fleet is so absurd. It's kind of, once you start asking any questions, it, I don't think there's any stopping. Yeah, there's no logic. What's weird? They grow out of the ground. It's normal. That's how ships are made. <laughs> you well, mentioned the kamikaze mission. That got me thinking. Like if I was the leader of this, if I was General, Allegiant General Pride here, here's what I would do. <laughs> I would say, all right, uh, you know, 500 and, you know, half the fleet here, 540, whatever, uh, um, you guys go west, just take off hyperspace out of here. And then, uh, the other half, um, blow up Exegol right now mm. and like blow up the planet, which would include, I'm assuming take it, that would take out all the rebels with it. And it doesn't even have to be half the fleet. I guess it could be like, all right. We have like 1,080 here. Like, like yeah, <laughs> 1,074 can take off. Yeah. Um, and just leave a couple here to blow up the planet, which would include, yeah. or fly around to the other side of the planet, blow it up from there so they don't see you doing it. Right. Um, and and that would take out the the all of the rebels, who are, the resistance who are here. Um, and, you know, obviously the Sith Temple, that's probably why they're not doing yeah, it, because it's a Sith. Pride likes, be it's a sacred Sith site. Pride stuff, likes so. Palpatine, right? I don't know if he yeah. likes them, Big likes time. them, but yeah. he likes them. 
No, well, I mean, I, does he like yeah, right. like, does he like Palpatine's like ideas yeah, yeah. or does he like the guy? That's, that's I don't know. The I think he likes. The... Like, are you in it for like the the cause? Or are you in it like is this a cult of personality? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe once he gets the fleet, he, he's he doesn't care about Palpatine anymore. Mm. Mrs. He seemed Emperor pretty Palpatine. devoted in that scene where they had a brief hollow conversation. Yeah. yeah, he seemed very true believer in it about Palpatine. Like, I can't wait to serve you again. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess he yeah, could just he's be lying, a duplicitous guy. Are you I being served? Yeah, right. All he wants yeah. is the flea. I mean, I could you yeah. could deduce that that's all he really wants. Like, he needs to do that to get mm. there. Like, how how did they figure out how to get there? Obviously, Palpatine had to help them get there, right? Unless I'm misremembering. Right, and then. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Once he has control of the fleet, then he could be like, ha Palpatine, that's all I wanted, you know? I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I've never really thought about it, you know? But it could be. I like that Ray, Ray and uh, Kylo Ren spend all this time <laughs> trying to find a wayfinder. So it's a secret passage. And then she is just like, I'll send you the instructions. I'll mail you the, 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 <laughs> the map. Google Maps. <laughs> email anybody I forget. <laughs> If I left okay. anybody off, let, just let them know. You're gonna see a mailbox there. Turn left. Turn left. <laughs> Don't it, ignore what the what the wayfinder tells you. Turn left at the mailbox and go down that way. <laughs> then you'll through you're the bloody nebula, whatever it's called. You'll the see it. Nebula. It used to be called something bloody else. Nebula. The locals call it the <laughs> FDR nebula. Yeah, now it's called the Admiral Akbar <laughs> Way, but it used to be called. <clears throat> um, that's all I have for this um, minute. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk about a guy here. I, I do too. Oh, a guy. Let's see okay. if it's the same guy. You've already talked about this guy, yeah, so maybe um, it's a different guy. Oh, no. I, yeah, I wanted to talk about this guy who says uh, they're targeting the navigation tower so the fleet can't deploy. Somebody oh. has to give uh, Gener Legion General Pry the bad news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity, fellas, because this is a character for which we have the actor's oh. name, but not the character's oh, name. Boy. This is Unidentified oh, First Order Officer, played by Andrew Havill, nice. who... If you look at Andrew Havel's, like, I think it's Havel. Um, if you look at his, his IMDb page, you look at his credits, I, I think there has not been, since, like, the 90s, there has not been a British historical drama that he has not appeared in. He's in, like, wow. every single, he's in The King's Speech, The Crown, uh, Victoria, like, the, the Henry, Henry VIII one, like, all these, like, anything. It's like, well, and he even pops up as, like, British people in other historical, like, the the... Uh, the one about FDR and like there, there's all these other ones where like you have to have a British guy show up to do something and they're like, well, let's oh, get yeah. that guy. Like he was the historical British guy um, and ticked off all of his. He got the crown. He got Doctor Who. He got a lot of. I don't know if oh, he was nice. in a Black Mirror because there weren't yeah. any that were in historical uh, <laughs> yeah, England. Maybe historical He's contractually he cannot yeah. act past 1950. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, to the so Andrew Havel plays the guy who says this. What? Is the character's name? We, what are wow. we going to name? Do we him? know his rank, or do we get to make that up too? I mean, how many pips uh, does he get? Just unidentified there? officer. Hmm. Hmm. Do we just Tuckerize his name, like 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 Vildrew or something? Or, or I am Vildrew. I am Vildrew. Vildrew. <laughs> I am Vildrew. I like oh, it. It's not <laughs> bad. Not bad. Yeah. Let's not overthink like it. it. Let's just go with that. Lu Lieutenant. Yeah. Lu Lieutenant. Left Captain. Lieutenant, I think is how he would say it. I mean, he's oh, from there you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because he's from yeah. historical Britain. So. Gosh, that's All fancy. Right. Could be a major that way, but let's go with Lieutenant. All right, I'm writing that down. Um, Lieutenant. Nice. I've been listening to this show all season. I think I've listened to oh. every episode. I have obviously heard the you talk one. about Richard E. Grant. I haven't heard anybody mm -hmm. gush mm -hmm. about Richard E. Grant that I can remember. Has people need to gush about Richard E. Grant? Really talked about Richard E. Grant beyond, besides mentioning no. with Nail and I or I. I, I, I don't, don't even know if we brought I, that. I, up. Really I keep every time I would idea. prompt people, like, "Do you like Richard E. Grant?" And no one really has well, strong feelings. So uh, tell us I'm, what you got. Show us what you got. I'm a really big fan of Richard E. Grant going way back, mainly because of with Nail and I, um, and I, and I'm. Now I'm forgetting because there's the, the name is too similar. So I'm going to do a look up really quick. Make sure I don't get the name wrong. I'm pretty sure it's Bruce Robinson. That's the director of With Nail and I. Yes, it is. I was going to say Bruce Davidson, who I think was the lead singer for a metal band, Pete, who anyway. Iron Maiden. Uh, that's right. No, no. Oh, yeah. Iron Maiden. It, yeah. Oh, it's Bruce Dickinson. Um, Bruce Dickinson yeah. is Iron Maiden. Oh, yeah, Bruce, Bruce yeah, Dickinson. Yeah. That's who I'm thinking. Of. Anyway. So there's With Nail and I, which is one of my favorite movies going way back. Um, the shaggy, drug-addled, 60s Britain, you know, film. There's not much so to explain about it other than these two guys like to get high <laughs> and drunk. And um, 
there's more to it than that, but not really in, that I could throw into an elevator pitch or anything. But there's also the Bruce Day, uh, the the Bruce uh, Robinson film, How to Get Ahead in Advertising. Has anybody seen How to Get Ahead in Advertising? Yes. That A is long, just long ago, the yes. craziest unhinged Richard E. Grant performance. Everybody, please go watch it. It's about a advertising agent, that's a very self centered guy, who gets this job writing for this like zit cream, and he can't think of the the campaign and it causes so much stress that he gets this massive zit on his shoulder that then he gets a face and starts talking to him and eventually becomes his head <laughs> and takes over and becomes the head of the guy, <laughs> you know, it completely changes his entire personality. Yeah. It's insane. It's beautiful. And he's like, it's just wonderful to see people that get to be this unhinged in a really like well-made film. Yeah. Like, Come on, we get to see Nicolas Cage be unhinged in a lot of straight to video stuff and you know other stuff. I'm not saying I like I like Nicolas Cage, but and then recently he was in in this very subdued, wonderful performance in this movie called Can You Ever Forgive Me, uh, which is Mariel Heller uh, oh, yeah. directed. That if you haven't seen that either, I was one of my favorite movies of the last five years or so. I just love the guy. I just wanted to gush just a little bit about him because, like I said, I hadn't heard anybody. I was surprised. I thought somebody would come on and and just talk about how much they yeah. loved him. Um, He's, I don't know. He's just a... I like, Alex has tried, like you said. Yeah. He, he's set up a couple people. <laughs> he's in lots of Robert Altman stuff. And I thought... From like the 90s I thought on. Joe and Susan would have been a... That would have been a home run I, with them, but... Yeah. Surprising. Mm, yeah. Those I bombs. don't know. Well, I, I, I'll take it. Anyway. I got a minute with him, so I decided... He's paired to... with uh, with Dean Stockwell in The Player. That's, well, right, right, right. He's asked. in The Player, he too. And Dean Stockwell God, yeah. Are. Weirdo producers. Wow. Known for his roles in the feature films Warlock, Henry and June, <laughs> Hudson Hawk, Bram Stoker's <laughs> nice. Dracula. It's like, Isn't he the villain in Hudson know, Hawk? It, or like the henchman or something? Um, I can't remember because I remember yeah, seeing... Yeah, he's one of those. I, it's been a while. Yeah. Anyway, great. Now, which is more upsetting to John, that I haven't seen Hudson Hawk no. or that I haven't seen With Nail and I? The, you okay. haven't seen With Nail and I. Hudson Hawk is not good. I don't care what anybody says. That's I, one of those, I, oh, if you watch it again, maybe. No, no, it's not very good. But With <laughs> Nail and I was trying to bury for you that I hadn't seen With Nail and I. Yeah, I know. It's on the, the okay. list of movies that are ridiculous that you've never seen. But, you know, sorry to <laughs> right anyone who hasn't seen it. But it's, fever, it's really a Tom out. thing. He doesn't watch enough movies. That's just all there is to it. He I was in, um, I have not seen there. Saturday Night Fever. I haven't seen any of those things you were talking about. With <laughs> well, Alex, you're on the movies. list. Okay. You're on my list. Saturday now, Night Fever. This is our new Night podcast, Fever. movies that neither of us have seen. That make right. John really mad. And you don't watch them to the talk list. about it. You I just talk it. about how, like, what do, what do you know about it from people talking about it? Um, yeah, R Richard E. Grant was in uh, The Iron Lady with uh, Andrew Havill, who, because it's a oh, wow. British historical drama, he had to be in it. Now, did they talk about that on the set of this movie? Did they oh, say, maybe. hey... Remember our good old times we had? Maybe I he brought him along. That. He was like, oh, my, my friend from the Iron Lady. Which one came first? Iron Lady or? Uh... We need a British guy. <clears throat> Anybody know a British guy? <laughs> Let me see. Which which one? Which do you guys think came first? Hmm. The, uh, Star Wait, Wars Iron Episode Lady, Nine: the, uh... the Rise of Skywalker or Iron the Iron Lady? The Iron Lady came first. That's, uh, that's uh, what's her name? As, uh, who's Streep. her name, right? That's, uh, mm -hmm. Streep is yeah, Thatcher Streep as... in Iron Lady. <laughs> right. Streep is Thatcher. Yeah, that was 2011, uh, that and okay. this was uh, 20 something else. 20? 2019. So it was eight years beforehand. So he probably did be like, hey, my buddy from this, uh, from this other movie. I have a, uh, a tactical note for this uh, final. Um, Hmm. What are they? The final countdown? What are they called? The final uh -huh. battlefield? Final order? Mm -hmm. Final order. Thank you. Um, <laughs> why don't they just order. leave the lights on on the tower? They're switching. The, they're, oh, they're attacking the tower. Okay, stop using the tower. We'll we'll switch that thing to our ship. The tower visually collapses and turns off, and the lights go off, yeah. cluing in the attacking rebels that that they don't, don't need to shoot at that anymore. They should have just left the lights on and. Right. Uh, let them like spend Motel all the time trying to blow so it this up. is where we get back to our Star Trek. Nobody asks where me. I'm where I'm like, eh, the sensors would have been able to tell anyway somehow. It's like there's, there's always some explanation. So. That's just for us. Yeah. 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 The, the rebels, the resistance, sorry, would have been able to tell anyway. It's for us that we like we can see it. Yeah, like, that's just for us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that must be it turning turned off. off. It is it is an yeah. odd move, you know, now that you mentioned this tower. It is kind of an odd move to be like, this is the thing that we need to do, and then just immediately be like, Oh, all we have to do is turn it off. Oh, okay. I kind of wish <laughs> it was like the Death Star where they're <laughs> yeah. like, right. oh yeah, there's a, there's a yeah. whole, we, we, we found a weakness. I've got a guy spackling it shut right now, you know, like, or something like that. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. But we nailed some plywood. It's okay right? because there needed to yeah. be another move here. It, just having them blow that thing up would have been boring. Mm -hmm. It would have been kind of fun to see them mm -hmm. try. I don't know. It's just kind of funny. It's just a quick pivot. 
and and well, and they could have successfully blown that up and then been like, hey, and then like, all right, well, and then Richard E. Grant could have been like, all right, we're, well, they blew that up. Let's let's just guide it out by hand. You know, like he could have had a little bit of panic. If you would have said, what do they think? That's the only manual. tower we had. We have a thousand towers. <laughs> yeah, what are yeah. crazy? We're gonna put all our eggs in that one basket. How we built a thousand star destroyers in one tower. Who planned we, this? We don't do that. <laughs> the, us imperial types, we don't ever put all our eggs in one basket. <laughs> Kidding? No. Yeah. We put some on the surface and some on the tower. That's yeah, it. Yeah, there you we go. Spread it out. Um, all right. Well, now that's all my. Oh, I did have one more note that uh, the the woman who lets us know, the pilot who lets us know that uh, the navigation tower has been deactivated. Um, that is uh, Roby Tice, the uh, the Mrs. Oh. Daisy. Mm-hmm. So, I have notes about her. For, uh, for oh, okay. when she the next minute. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, anyway, we'll talk about her. Do you want to? Uh, no, no. Let's talk about her okay. again uh, tomorrow. Can you guys come back tomorrow right. to talk about Roby Tice? Yes, sure. Roby Tice. Roby Tice. Um, Roby Tice. Everybody had to do a Ned. We um, <laughs> 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 we will uh, be back tomorrow with these guys. And in the meantime, um, let's say um, hey, you know, if you like uh, this kind of. Uh, Jibber jabber, yim yam, uh, whatever that we're talking about here. Um, that's because we're uh, we're all from a show, except for Alex. Alex has shown up on the show from time to from time to time. From but time uh, time. Uh, John and Tom and I and our friend Joe Mazel, who uh, is uh, so we're getting reports that he's been sighted off the coast of uh, Havana, but we're we're not <laughs> sure. He's uh, that we all do a show called ABCD TOS, which is about. Star Trek, the original series. We wrapped it all up. We did all the episodes in alphabetical order, plus then we did the original cast movies in alphabetical order. You can go check those out, abcdtos.com. Take you there. It'll, you'll find it all. Um, we you like it. Tom's got the shirt. Um, and it's a double reference shirt because we also did ABC Devo where we went alphabetically through all the Devo songs we in sure alphabetical did. order. Um, and uh, the that's it. Songs. The album songs. And the, the non-album songs were all on the Patreon. So if you want to support... That show, go to, uh, I think, abcdtos.com slash Patreon. Still gets you there. Um, but, right. Or you could search Patreon for ABC Devo or abcdtos. And, um, but just to get to the episodes, abcdtos.com, abcdevo.com. We'll be back here tomorrow at starwarsminute.com. Star Wars Minute! Pew, pew. Dot com. 